the best answer to what do you want to be when you grow up is I don't know yet but I'm figuring it out and that should be your answer for your whole 20s and arguably even through your 30s because here's the thing about deciding on careers you're probably going to be wrong and that's okay. The majority of people on this planet would change their career three to seven times in their life. Back when I was in high school, I wanted to become a doctor. And I did succeed, I did become a doctor, and I loved it in a lot of ways. But eventually, I quit medicine, and now I work in education and entrepreneurship full time. And I will tell you, I do not regret leaving medicine. And there are some very good reasons why you too should not be too fixed on a career. One of the fields I've been involved in researching and publishing on is called employability. It studies how people go through education and then get jobs and then navigate those jobs in a way that makes them feel fulfilled. And there's this handy term thrown around in employability research that's useful for you to think about. The term is employability trajectories. And we use the word employability trajectory instead of career path. Because what research has shown is that careers are rarely paths to take, like a rail road that a train rolls down, at least not in the modern age. Instead, the path you take is more like a car driving in a desert. You can go anywhere and the path is what you see when you look behind you and look at the trail you left behind. We say trajectory because where you end up depends on what you are doing now, but it can change. Let me tell you a secret that my teachers and my career counselors never told me. Knowing what you want to do early in life is not a good thing. So I used to run this nonprofit helping students enter into healthcare pathways and I'd run the seminar and I'd ask a question, how many of you want to be a doctor? And everyone puts their hands up. And then I say, well, how many of you really want to be a doctor? Like really committed and willing to put in the work. And everyone keeps their hands up. And so I say, how many of you have wanted this for as long as you can remember? You've wanted it since you were like nine years old. And at this point, their hands are still up. People are grinning. You can see that they're like proud that they're, you know, able to showcase how committed and determined they are. And that is a problem because we should not be deciding on what we want to do for the rest of our lives based on a decision made by a nine year old even if that nine-year-old was ourself. In fact, it's mathematically a better decision for you to change careers as you get older because of a phenomenon called probability concentration. There's this famous mathematics question called the Monty Hall problem. So there's this game show called the Monty Hall show or something, and there are three doors. And behind one of the doors is a dream car, and behind two of the doors is a goat. And in this example, we're assuming that we want a dream car even though goats are pretty awesome. The participant chooses a door and the game show host who knows what's behind the doors will open one of the doors that does not have the dream car behind it. It's got the goat. And then they ask the question, do you want to stick with your first decision or do you want to switch to a different door? Now at this point, there's only two doors left that remain closed. Do you switch? or do you stay? And now the trippy part about this is that it seems intuitively that there's a 50% chance, so it shouldn't really matter. But actually, mathematically speaking, you should change. In fact, there is a 66% chance that your dream car is behind another door, the other door that you did not pick. How does that work? Well, this is what probability concentration is. It is because the probability that your decision was correct is determined at the point you made the decision. And even if you get more information later down the line, it does not change the chances you were correct when you made the decision. This is much more obvious when we think about something like this. Instead of three doors, let's play a different game. I'm thinking of a number between one and one million. You can try to guess what number that is. Go on, think of a number. See if you can guess it. If you've got a number in your head. Now, let me tell you this. The number that I'm thinking of is either the number that you have just guessed or it is the number 417,032. Do you want to stick with your original guess or would you like to switch to 
the only other remaining option of those 1 million numbers which is 417,032. It should become a little bit more obvious. The chance that you got it right in the first time is one in a million. And by me now telling you that every other number is wrong and giving you only two choices remaining, the 999,999 chance out of a million is concentrated in the one remaining option and so this is a very similar thing with career choice when we are young when people are saying like hey what do you want to be when you grow up we don't know anything about anything <laughs> at least if it was me i had no idea what it meant to be a doctor let alone when i was like 10 years old and so of all the different professions and jobs and career paths that are out there some of which don't even exist yet the chance that you just so happen to pick the career that is perfect for you on your first go back when you were just barely able to function as a human being is really low. As you get older and as you learn more, you gain more experiences, you learn more about those careers, you learn more about the different options, you learn more about yourself and what is important to you and what type of life you want to live. These are doors opening for you and showing you what is behind all these different options. And so when you're armed with that knowledge, it is a good idea to change your decision. I'm not saying you should always change because you may decide on a career path and you could genuinely love it and have a fulfilling life. And if that happens, great. I am so very much happy for you. However, a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people will have regrets and second thoughts and want to change and wonder what else is in store for life. And they will not change because they think they shouldn't change. So why is it that choosing to change careers feels so wrong? Well, it's probably because you didn't get a pat on the back for it, literally. When we're young, Everyone's always asking you what you want to be when you grow up. And once you make that decision, there's a lot of positive reinforcement. Everyone's like, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, that's a good idea. You get the pat on the back for it. And you as a child are less uncertain and there's more comfort. There's more security because you've made the decision. And over time, you even start to form an identity around this. And so when new information comes in that challenges this, it's not just a challenge to a decision, it is a challenge to an entire identity. And challenging that also means opening up to all of this uncertainty that had been locked away for years. I remember one time I was working with these two siblings. The older sister wanted to become a doctor. It was very clear about that. And the younger sister had no idea what she wanted to do. And the older one was always complaining about how the younger one like was directionless. She entered a commerce degree and then dropped out and entered an arts degree and then dropped out and then was just working at a restaurant instead of studying. And so she really was pretty aimless. But here's the thing. Those two sisters, they're the same. The older sister had no idea what being a doctor really meant. She just decided to do it, and then after she decided that, she just didn't question it. The younger sister didn't have any other ideas and also couldn't be bothered really thinking about it, and so just didn't decide on anything. Both of them escaped the need to really critically think about and evaluate their career decisions. The older one escaped by just making a decision and never questioning it, and the younger one escaped by questioning everything and then just deciding not to do anything. And unfortunately, but as expected, the older sister now is in hospital placements, feeling really stressed because she kind of hates it and is now opening up that uncertainty for the first time in years. So if our career decisions are probably going to be wrong to begin with, then how are we meant to decide on a career at all? Well, it is surprisingly simple. There's three steps and the first step is to just get information. You can only make a decision with what you know at that time. And so we should be critical about any career that we have chosen. Think of it like purchasing a product. You wanna read the reviews, the five-star reviews and the one-star reviews. Every career has its crappy parts and it's better to know about it and think about it rather than getting ambushed by it like six years later. See the career for what it is not what you hope it will be. And here's a pro tip. You should always examine multiple careers 
at the same level of depth. A lot of pre-med students that I work with used to tell me that they've learned a lot about being a doctor, they've spoken to doctors, they've shadowed doctors, they've watched YouTube videos, they've read blog posts, they've done all of this research and they know as much as they can possibly know about going into medicine and good for them. But they also haven't explored any alternatives, at least not nearly to the same level of depth. So you can't really say that you've thought through all your options if you've actually only thought about one option. Step two, once you've got information, decide on something early, but stay open. Even with all this information, you're never really gonna know some things until you're doing it and living it. And you can't just pause life and just like gather information forever. In fact, a lot of the information you can't even access until you are walking down that path. So with the information you do have and can reasonably get, make the best decision you can at least for now. Do whatever you need to do to pursue that career for now, but stay open to the fact that that might change. Keep your eyes on the goal. The goal is to build a life that you find fulfilling. It is not to stay committed and loyal to a decision long past its expiry date. And like I said, nothing is all good and no bad. Sometimes the bads are worth sticking around for, but sometimes it's a sign that we need to move on. Which is why step three, figure out what a worthwhile career actually means. Learn what the criteria for an ideal career truly is so that we know what is worth sticking around for. And to do that, you should check out the video that I made on this very topic right here. So I'll see you in that video.